Peanuts and the Homeless Man by A. L. Don French, read by Melissa Sherubin James. Music lessons were over, and Peanut, with her friend English, sat on the wall outside the music school waiting for her 12-year-old brother, Sebastian, to join them. The three were supposed to go home together. Peanut got the nickname when Daddy Max, one of her grandfathers, had given her the name. As he said, she was as small as a peanut when she was born. Peanut's full name was Sabine Clementine James, but she got called Sabine only when she was in trouble. At eight years old, she was still the smallest among her family and friends. Her size bothered her, but not enough to prevent her doing the right thing whenever she could. Her friend was also eight years old. His proper name was Alexander, but everyone called him English because he used to have an English accent. He no longer had the accent, but the name stuck. He's forgotten all about us, English said. It looks that way, Peanut had to agree. Now what? My phone has no service. Neither does mine, English double-checked his cell phone. So we walked, she suggested. English nodded grimly and shrimped off the wall. Peanut did the same. It was only after five o'clock, but since it was Christmas time, the place was already getting dark. And school was over, so the place was also deserted. The two eight-year-olds started to walk. Peanut instinctively reached for the boy, and hand in hand, they headed down the main road. The aim was to get a bus. Yo, where you two off to all alone? A voice hailed him. They stopped abruptly, turned, and saw a scruffy, dirty, homeless man. English, Peanut whispered. All her friends were bigger than her, and English was no different. It's okay, he said softly, as he positioned himself between the small girl and the homeless man. The man walked up to them. We're going home, English said. Alone, the man demanded. When they nodded, he said, I'm coming with you. He held up his hand to stop any objection. You're too small to be alone on the road. You walk in front and I'll follow. And that is exactly what the three did. Peanut's grip of English's hand got tighter. As they reached the end of the road, they were met by Peanut's worried father. Bass came home and forgot you all. It's okay, boss man, they're safe, the hobo said. Who are you? Sheldon asked. Everyone calls me EMT. I used to be an EMT, but not anymore, the man explained. EMT? Oh my God, it's me, Sheldon James. The two men stared at each other. That's my daughter. Sheldon? EMT was just as surprised. Look, hold this. Sheldon offered him some money. Get in with the kids. Horror gripped Peanut as she surveyed the state of the man, not to mention the smell. No, boss man, EMT declined to Peanut's great relief. Why? English asked. EMT hesitated. I... All right, come check me tomorrow. Sheldon handed the man a card. This is where my office is. Yes, boss man. Stop calling me that. We need to talk catch up and work a plan. Make sure you come to see me first thing tomorrow. Sheldon did not need to say what he meant. Even Peanut understood that her father wanted to help his friend. EMT nodded, accepted the money and walked away. What's an EMT? English asked. Emergency medical technician. They provide basic emergency services in all sorts of situations, Sheldon explained. Wow. Imagine your friend, EMT, was our guardian, English said. What will you do if he doesn't come to see you? Peanut asked. Then we go look for him, Sheldon was full. If you are really someone's friend, then you help them. A friend is a person you may not see for years, but the moment you need help, there they are, no questions asked. I was at school with EMT and I'm going to help him so he had better show up tomorrow. We are going to help him, Peanut corrected. Yes, we are, English agreed. Sheldon turned the car around and they drove to Peanut's house. The car was bar barely packed when Peanut dashed out into the house. Ma, I'm back. Her mother emerged. You're too noisy, Peanut. Where is Bass? English entered with Sheldon. Confined to his room, Simon joined the group. 
on bread and water. Simeon followed his twin into the room. Mom, no, Peanut cried out. Sir Bean, he had a responsibility to collect you. Anything could have happened to you, Sheila, her mother, insisted. But I, I had English with me and EMT, Peanut said. Please, Mom, let Bass out. EMT? Sheila asked. The hobo, Simeon queried. By the school? Simon asked. Oh, God, Sheldon, a vagrant? Sheila's fear threatened to overwhelm her. Turned out to be a schoolmate of mine, Sheldon said, Robert August. He always wanted to be an EMT, and that is exactly when he did what he did when he grew up. Because became an EMT, but something has gone wrong. And in true Caribbean style, you all started calling him EMT, Sheila calmed down. I was there, English interjected. I would never let anything happen to Peanut. We know the twins chorus as Alexander's embarrassment turned his face a bright pink. Peanut felt sorry for her friend and leaped to his defense. After all, he had indeed protected her. Leave him alone. Oh, the twins teased. Enough, Sheldon intervened. EMT is a former classmate who has obviously fallen on bad times. I asked him to come to my office tomorrow to see me. Sheila smiled. There are times I know exactly why I love you. The twins groaned. You want to join Bass? She threatened. No, the twins beat a hasty retreat. Peanut, you and English wash up while your daddy calls his mom and you all can eat while he waits. The next day was a regular school day and it moved along too slowly for Peanut's liking. All she could focus on was what was happening with her daddy and EMT. Did he show up? What was his story? Why was he homeless? The tiny eight-year-old's head was full of questions. After school, Peanut and English reported to Sheldon's office. Did he come, Uncle Sheldon? Peanut and her friends, though not related, in true Caribbean style, referred to each other's parents as aunt and uncle. No, he did not. Sheldon's irritation could be hood. Now what? Peanut asked. Now we go find him. He may think I was just saying come see me to be polite, but I wasn't. It made no sense looking for him during the day. We have to do it at night when he will be back in his spot. We'll, we'll start by the music school, Sheldon said. It took many days of searching. The entire Lucian Six were out with Sheldon. Yasmin, Mandy, Christian, Anton, English, and Peanut. Finally, on Christmas Eve, Peanut and English found him. EMT, Peanut stopped him. Why didn't you come to see my daddy? Little girl, when people are embarrassed, they say things they don't mean. I was at school a long, long time ago with your daddy. I know he didn't really mean for me to come see him. He was just saying that. But he did mean it. He waited, but you never came. And we have been looking for you for days, Peanut informed the hobo. He did? You have. EMT was surprised. The mister, if you are an EMT, why are you living on the streets? English asked. EMT considered the question. I came back from the US after doing a one-year assignment at a fire station. For reasons I don't want to say, it didn't work out with my wife and it hit me hard. I started drinking to the point that I couldn't do my job anymore and they fired me. I would do anything for a drink. I would drink before I would eat. Once I lost my job and I had drunk my savings away, my next stop was the streets. What about your family? Peanut asked. Your friends? I have none, EMT said simply. Do you still want to be an EMT? English queried. Again, EMT paused to think about the question. Yes. Yes, I would like to be an EMT again. My daddy can help you, Peanut promised. But you can't be drinking EMT. It's not good for you. I know, little girl. I know, EMT admitted. Don't call me that, Peanut complained. Please. All this time, they had been walking back to the car. Now, they met up with the rest of the team. Ew, EMT, you stink, Christian stated the obvious. Who asked you, Peanut snarled. EMT, 
Sheldon hailed the man. Why didn't you come to see me like we agreed? I waited. I'm sorry. I didn't think that you meant it. But your daughter convinced me different. He still wants to be an EMT, English announced. Not in that state, Christian commented. Yasmin and Anton hit him at the same time. That's why he has the name. It's all he has ever wanted to do, Sheldon said. I said you would help him, Daddy. Peanut watched her father. That we can, Sheldon agreed. Last time I had space in the car, tonight with all these kids I don't. You have to come see me, EMT. I promise I will, or else we will come back, Christian threatened. So I see, EMT grinned. The next day was Christmas Day, and Sheila James was faced with her husband and his friend EMT. She swallowed hard. First things first, Sheldon, your friend needs a shower and clean clothes. With the two men off to comply with their requests, Peanut and her brothers were dispatched to deliver packages to the neighbors. Peanut returned home first. Hello, she said politely to the strange man in the living room. Daddy, did EMT leave? She addressed Sheldon. Her father nodded towards the stranger who grinned at her. Her jaw dropped. EMT? The one and only, he smiled. Sheldon started to explain. All the time we were searching for you. I've been talking to people. They have been donating money. I wanted to collect $10,000, enough to cover first and last month's rent on an apartment and get you into rehab. We've collected $70,000, Peanut squealed. What? EMT was shocked. This is nuts. I made a deal with a friend of mine, and with that kind of money, we got you the apartment guaranteed for a year. Sheila passed around cups of cocoa tea. The man started to cry. Peanut stood before him. Don't cry, EMT. It's Christmas. Miracles happen at Christmas. EMT sniffed. I know, but last I slept under the Sanssouci Bridge, hungry and all alone in this world. Tonight I'm with you and your family. This has changed the way I look at people. This is the best Christmas that I've ever had. She slipped her small hand into her huge one. Mine too. EMT squeezed it. Can you go through the day without a drink? Sheila asked gently. Horror covered EMT's face. I don't know. I never had to. Sheila, I don't know if I can do this. It's all right. When the time comes, you and I will deal with it. Until we get you to the rehab center, then. Sheldon didn't finish his sentence. He didn't have to. Rest assured that until the folks at the rehab center assure me that you have battled this demon, I will not release this money to you. I will manage it, Sheila said to EMT. Sheila, Sheldon grumbled. That is fair. If not, I will drink it all, EMT agreed. You have a great lady there, Sheldon. Glad we understand each other. She ignored the praise and headed back to the kitchen. Peanut watched as her father followed, then stopped her mother. She could not hear what was being said, but she saw when he hugged her and she hugged him back. Peanut made a face, then joined the EMT on the sofa. Do you know any stories? I know stories about your daddy, his eyes twinkled wickedly. Ooh, yes, tell me, she ordered. This I forbid. Sheldon returned to the room. There was this one time EMT started. Her brother chose at that moment to return to the, the Sheldons. To return, and the Sheldon story started. The father decided it may be best to help out in the kitchen. As they listened to the first of many stories, Peanut knew it was going to be one of those best Christmas days ever. The end.